our second Sunday of Advent. Our Advent journey calls us on in preparation for what's to come. Our dusting off and getting ready, tweaking, changing what we do. Advent God, dust us off today. Because we've always done it, doesn't mean we always must. As our journey makes us think again and change the way we live, Advent God, dust us off. The challenge is to learn what old ways should be no more, to encounter and experience and be brave in stepping out. Advent God, dust us off today. The more we learn, the more we change, the more we think, the more we grow. The more we dust off our old ways off, the more our faith shines out. Advent God, dust us off today. Now Val's going to light the candle. We can sing our second verse of our hymn. Advent God, as we light this second candle, may we accept the changes and challenges to our living and our loving that your extraordinary gift leads us all to make. May we be prepared to dust off old ways, learn new ways, and become more Christ-like. Amen. As we come to worship God again this morning, we hear these words of Isaiah. I will send my messenger before you to prepare your way. A single voice calling out in the desert, get ready for the Lord who is coming, make a straight path for him. And so we sing our first hymn this morning, angel voices ever singing, round thy throne of light.
pray together. Loving God, we rejoice in this season of good news and goodwill. And we celebrate once more the birth of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the Word made flesh. And we praise you, Lord, for the assurance of his final triumph as you came through him, and so you shall come again. For coming amongst us through Jesus, for bearing our flesh and our blood, for living our life and sharing our humanity, for entering our world, loving God, we praise you. For suffering and dying amongst us, for your victory over death, your triumph over evil, and your promise that the kingdom will come. Loving God, we praise you. For the wonder of this season, for its message of love and forgiveness, its promise of peace and justice, and the gift of everlasting life of which it speaks. Loving God, we praise you. And so, loving God, we rejoice again in this season of good news and goodwill. And we look forward to that day when the Jesus of Bethlehem will be the Lord of all. As you came through him, so you shall come again. And so, Lord Jesus, as we rejoice in this season, so full of promise, this time which reminds us of all that has been and all that is yet to be. May the words we hear today, the worship we offer, and the events that we remember teach us to trust you completely and that your saving purpose will be fulfilled. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. And so we sing again, all I once held dear, knowing you, Jesus, is the greatest thing.
We hear two passages now from the New Testament, firstly from Mark's Gospel and then from the letter of James. The lesson is taken from Mark 1. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him, in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. The reading is from James, chapter 5, verses 7 to 12, and can be found on page 1216 of the Church Bibles. Patience in Suffering Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, As an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Thank you very much for those readings. We sing again on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh.
I imagine that there are many things in our daily lives which um, irritate or frustrate us. For example, when we are told when we're in a hurry, can you hold just for a moment, please, when we know it's going to take several minutes? Or there has been a delay in the delivery of an order which is, originally, which is urgently needed for someone's birthday. Or again, when you telephone for an appointment or with a question and are then met with an electronic voice which says, please listen to the following options and then takes you through about six different numbers to press before you are finally offered to the opportunity to speak to a person, but only to find then that you're number 52 in the queue waiting to speak to that person. Well, James tells us in his letter at verse 7, chapter 5, to be patient. And I wonder how many of us are. My wife tells me I have no patience. And James goes on to tell us to take the example of the prophets. So to start with, let's think about some of the prophets and characters of the Old Testament who had to wait a long time to know God's plan for them, and therefore had to have patience. There was Noah. He was warned about things not seen and built the ark to save his family and then waited 120 years before ever seeing any rain. Abraham waited until he was 100 years of age before he saw the fulfillment of God's promise of a son. Moses, when he grew up, left Egypt and waited 80 years for God to call him to be the deliverer of his people. Jacob waited seven years for the woman he loved, Rachel, to marry him. Jeremiah was barred from the temple and forbidden to speak. And so he hired a professional writer to whom he could dictate all of his sermons and then read those sermons aloud to the public, only to be then arrested, and the scrolls which he had so painstakingly put together were destroyed. And so what did Jeremiah do? He started all over again. And so James tells us, if you want to be patient, remember the prophets of the Old Testament. But these same prophets also demonstrated there is a time for righteous impatience when things aren't as they should be, such as when we see and hear of things in the world which cannot be possibly part of God's intended plan. But God's love is strong, so we know there are opportunities to put things right. And so in the New Testament we see the the long-awaited coming of the Messiah. And there was John the Baptist who prepared the way for him. But John the Baptist was used to only a life of freedom, wandering the countryside, and then found himself in prison. And yet his only concern was hoping that his work of preparing the way for Jesus had not been in vain. So he sent word to Jesus asking him to confirm that he is the one that we have been waiting for. John the Baptist paved the way for the coming Messiah. And when John baptized Jesus, John announced Jesus as the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. I am not worthy, John said, to carry his sandals. And then even Jesus himself had to wait 30 years to begin his earthly ministry. And so during this Advent season, we prepare once more our hearts and our minds to receive the coming Messiah as we look towards the time when Christ will come again. And so we need to be ready but we also need to be patient because that time will come in God's own good time. 
We are reminded that Zechariah called on his knowledge of the prophets to describe what the birth of Jesus would bring to the world. It would drive away all the signs of darkness and continues to do so today when we accept Jesus as our saviour. You may be familiar with the story of Birmingham City Council which many years ago reportedly cancelled Christmas. A newspaper journalist wrote, Birmingham will celebrate the festive season as usual this year with carol singing and fairy lights and street entertainment, but they won't call it Christmas. Officials have renamed it Winterval. And it's understood there was a strong and misguided element of political correctness in that decision by Birmingham City Council. They were mindful of the practices and beliefs of other cultures and decided it was inappropriate, therefore, to call the season Christmas. But the reality is, of course, Christmas is for everyone. For Christmas time is a time for hope for all, hope for the future in making sense of some of the past. And every newborn child is, of course, a sign of that hope. When Jesus was born, it was into a world of huge distractions and indifference to his birth, much as it would perhaps be today. The world of Winterville, perhaps, rather than the world of Christmas. But there is still hope. There is still time to change. And this is where we need to continue to be patient. For Winterville will pass, but Jesus' influence and presence will last forever. We've all heard the phrase, I'm sure, that patience is a virtue. Billy Graham once wrote, Most people would would admit that patience isn't their greatest strength. But it is important to consider the needs of others, particularly when things are out of our control. But we must also guard against selfishness, Billy Graham wrote, for patience is an attitude of expectation. The world is going through a testing time at the moment, and particularly in certain countries. And one of the things the world perhaps needs the most at the moment is patience. Patience to hold back and consider the consequences before taking action. Patience was in abundance during COVID lockdown. We had to be patient. There was no alternative, despite us all being impatient to get back to as normal life as possible as soon as we could. So James, in our passage this morning, talks a lot about patience. James writes, Be patient, therefore, until the Lord comes. Be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. The judge is standing at the door. James is effectively telling us to live every day as though Jesus might return today, or indeed this Christmas time. But God says, today is the day of our salvations. And God also says, now is the time of my favor. But God is eternal, so to God there is no rush. For the Bible also says, a day with the Lord is a thousand years. And so we need to be patient as Jesus will return in his own good time. Of course, this time of year as we approach Advent, as we, as we go into Advent, we think especially of Jesus coming to us again. And then as an example of patience, James refers in particular to the patient farmer. 
The farmer spends a lot of time waiting, dependent very often on things outside his control, such as the weather. The farmer waits for the right time to plough, the right time to plant, the right time to harvest. There are a lot of things the farmer has to wait for and therefore be patient. And it's the same in our lives. There are many things we can't control and so we need patience, particularly when things are uncontrollable. The farmer needs to give time for the seeds he has planted to grow. We need to give time for our faith and knowledge of God to grow. It rarely happens suddenly overnight. And one day God will reap his harvest. In the 1960s, there was a real sense of urgency and impatience about Christ's return particularly in North America. There was an organization called the Worldwide Church of God, which believed that the church as a whole should separate itself from the rest of the world in anticipation of Christ's return, they thought in 1975. Why they thought 1975 is not really clear. But there was a lot of turmoil in the world in the 1960s, which many of us may well remember. It was the height of the Cold War. John F. Kennedy, the president, was assassinated. George Wallace, a nominee for the presidency, was shot and crippled. Senator Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King were also assassinated. And major cities were in flames because of race riots. And then there was also the war in Vietnam. It was a time of real turmoil. And so there was a real sense of urgency and impatience in the church in trying to address all of these issues and anticipating Christ's return. And we perhaps begin to see this impatience creeping again into today's world when we look at all the turmoil since the turn of the millennium. But this same impatience also affected Jesus' disciples some 2,000 years ago, for they often asked Jesus the time of his coming again, for they were also going through a time of turmoil through through the Roman occupation. But in Acts chapter 1, verses 7, we can read that Jesus responded by saying, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But it was not just the disciples who were becoming impatient for Christ's return, but the whole church for decades afterwards lived in expectation of Jesus' immediate second coming. And it was James much later who was still telling the now scattered members of his church to wait with patience for the years that remained before Christ's return. Patience is mentioned five times in that short passage from James. And he establishes these important principles while we wait with patience. Not to lose heart or our faith. Not to fall out amongst ourselves. To be resilient and to persevere. And there are passages in Proverbs which stress the practical value of patience. It avoids strife, we can read. It promotes peaceful resolutions of disagreements and how we need that today. But in the face of current trials and difficulties, it is also important in having patience, in knowing that God will take care of us. And if we know that, then our patience will endure. Experts tell us that there's a knack to being patient Some people are born with it, apparently, 
while others, we are told, can learn patience. But we can learn to be more patient by controlling our responses in any situation in the face of adversity and frustration. And Paul reminds us in Galatians that the Holy Spirit controls our lives and will produce this kind of fruit in us, love, joy, peace, patience and kindness, if we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. It's suggested there are three ways of developing patience. Firstly, recognizing the wider picture. People live at a hectic pace these days and expect things to happen or to be available to them immediately. But God often used times of waiting in our lives to mold us into the people that he wants us to be. And so in particular, it's important how we use that time of waiting to use that time to try and understand God's purpose and perhaps also to understand other people's perspective, why they behave the way they do, if that is the reason for our impatience. Secondly, to remember that God is working whilst we are waiting, but God does not work according to our timetable. And thirdly, to recognize how patient God is with us, helping us in our faith and failings, God does not expect our faith to be 100% from the outset, but to develop over the course of our lives. And then we only have to read the New Testament further to recognize how patient Jesus was with the disciples. Take Peter, for example, for he was inconsistent with his faith. One minute, Peter would acknowledge Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, he said. And the next minute, Peter would say, Jesus who, as he denied him knowing him even. One minute, Peter was walking on water. The next minute, Peter thought he was drowning. But Jesus never lost patience with Peter. And so just like the prophets of old and the farmer, we need to be patient. We may be a bit behind with our preparations for Christmas this year, but we should never be behind in our preparations for Christ's return. In our Advent preparations this year, we should therefore ensure that we are helping to prepare the way today for Christ's return, and that next time, everyone will recognize his transforming love, both in our communities and in our world. The Jewish people in the New Testament had been expecting and looking forward to the birth of the Messiah for many years as their anointed king. And yet when their patience was eventually rewarded, they failed to recognize that Jesus was the king that they had been waiting for. And that's the reason perhaps why Jesus has not yet returned to earth. God is waiting patiently for unbelievers to come to know and follow him rather than to return and again be unrecognized by many. So we all need to be patient too as we recognize that God is working in the world whilst we are waiting and to keep waiting on God and trusting in God whilst we wait to proclaim his glory. Amen. And so we sing our next hymn, God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year.
Now Doreen is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you sent the prophets and John the Baptist to prepare your way. You have told us of your coming, and you revealed yourself to us in Jesus. You come to each of us in power and in love. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, we give thanks for all who tell of your love and who proclaim your coming. We ask your blessing upon all ministers and preachers and upon all who teach the scriptures and tell of your coming. Bless all who are baptised into your presence and power. Lord, we ask your forgiveness when your church misuses the resources you have given it and when we fail to live up to your teaching and love. Lord, come to us and guide us. We remember in your presence the troubles and sorrows of our world. We pray for all who are caught up in war or violence. We see daily on our televisions the war between Palestine and Israel, the thousands of people who have been killed, injured, or who are displaced, the people who are missing, others held as hostages, and the many now with no homes or food. The hospitals now are unable to give medical care. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the work of the United Nations and all the peacekeeping forces and aid workers. We pray also for the Ukrainian people where war is still continuing. We pray for all who suffer from the greed and insensitivity of others. May we not misuse or squander the earth's resources, but use them with care and for the benefit of all. We ask your blessings upon all the leaders and the politicians. Lord, come to us and guide us. We ask your blessing upon all who do not look forward to Christmas. We remember all who will be homeless or lonely, and all who are poor or deeply in debt. Those whose future looks bleak, and those who will not be able to afford food or luxuries perhaps Christmas presents for their children and presents for their families here in the UK. We pray for our homes. May they be places of love and peace where you are welcome. May we know that in the coming of others to us, you also come and seek our love. Lord, come to us, forgive us, and guide us. We remember all who are ill, those who are ill at home and suffering at this time. Perhaps those with illness who may find no cure. All who are depressed, and all those who are overburdened. We pray for all who are in hospital 
or in care homes at this time. Lord, may they know your peace and your presence. May all who walk in darkness come to know your light and your love. Lord, come to us and guide us. We remember before you all who have died. We remember all our loved ones and our friends departed. And we pray for the family members who are left at this time and missing their loved ones. We pray for any who have died recently. May they rejoice in fullness of life and be with you in glory and with all your saints. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May we all say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Your free will offerings will now be received, please. Father, we acknowledge that all that we have comes from you, and so we bring back to you these gifts of money, tokens of our love and our time and our loyalty to your service. Bless these gifts, Lord, and also the givers, that they may use for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. We close our service this morning with come and join the celebration for it's a very special day.
And so we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and all we love. Amen.